Hello and welcome to another Design Clips here at W Plus 9. This is Dawn and in today's video I have a technique to share with you. It's kind of a twist on ink blending, more of a targeted ink blending. Now we all know that ink blending is a great alternative for adding color to your outlined images to say colored pencils or Copics or watercolor. It's quick, it's easy, and the results can be quite stunning. I'm going to be using our new Modern Calla Lilies stamp set. I say that 10 times fast. <laughs> but you can use any outlined images that you have on hand. I like these because they are a very simple flower, so it's great for demonstrating this. And this set is one of our newer sets. You'll find some anthurium uh, images in this set along with several angles of the calla lilies. Gosh, that is hard to keep saying, calla lilies. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, now all of the images in this set have a matching companion die, and you can see that these images are actually quite large. So you can build up a substantial bouquet or just use a few of them and really create a striking focal point. I'm going to be creating several cards, so I'm going to use my Misty so that I can stamp out several of these panels. I'm stamping on Distress Watercolor cardstock, and I will be using Distress Ink. Now, you can use any ink or cardstock that you might already have on hand. It'll work fine, but I like the fact that this ink will sit on top of this cardstock for a minute, and that allows me to blend the colors together once I apply them, and I'll show you here in a little bit. So I'm just arranging these. I'm going to pick them up on my Misty, and then this will allow me to stamp several panels one after the other. Now we're all familiar with the heat embossing. I'm going to treat my cardstock with an anti-static tool, ink up my stamps with Versamark, which is a clear sticky ink. That anti-static tool will keep the embossing powder from sticking anywhere that I don't want to, and the Versamark will be the only thing that the embossing powder adheres to. I'll sprinkle the embossing, embossing, <laughs> the embossing powder, and then shake off the excess and heat it with my heat tool. That will melt the embossing powder and now I am ready to do my ink blending. And you could try this with any color embossing powder you want. The embossing powder is going to resist all of the ink and it's going to give us the outline of the flower itself. So the color is really up to you and how you want your final product to look. So to do the ink blending, I'm going to be using these Fantastix sticks. Now these are like pin shaped, so you hold them like a pen or a pencil and then they have a small sponge tip applicator on the end. So this is basically just a blending tool in a smaller, more precise, targeted point. Now, if you don't have Fantastics, uh, you could probably cut down pieces of makeup sponge or even one of your larger blending sponges and try with that as well. I did really like the Fantastics because I could hold it more like a pencil and it gave me more control. I'm gonna be starting out doing the white version of the Calla Lily. And for that, uh, I saw a couple different versions of white ones. Some of them were just all pure white. Some of them had more of a yellow center that faded out into white, and some of them had more of a green center. So for these, I'm going to do the green that bleeds out into the white. So I'm starting by picking up my color, and I'm just blending it into the area that I want my color to, to be. <laughs> But because I'm using that small tip applicator, I'm able to be a lot more precise with where I'm laying down my color. I'm doing small circular motions, and sometimes I'm, most of the time, I like to dab it off on scratch paper first, and that's just so that I don't put down too much color to, to begin with. It's much easier to add color than it is to take it away. Once I'm done adding all of the green, I'm going to come through and it's time to start adding the quote unquote white. And technically, I'm not adding the white, I'm adding the shadows. So the shadows are going to actually make the white pop. For that, I'm using weathered wood and this is a, it's a muted blue, a very muted gray blue. If you guys watch my videos, um, you know that I don't shade white objects with gray. I usually shade with either a purple or a blue and often I will shade with whatever colors are surrounding that white object because white will reflect back whatever colors are around it. So to add the shadows for this I'm actually concentrating more on coloring outside of the flower shape and then I'm letting just the edges of that flower get tinted with that weathered wood color. 
So I'm defining the boundary of, I'm reinforcing the boundary of that white heat embossing. And when we die cut these out, it's going to make sense. Trust me. <laughs> you can kind of already start to see that the flowers are popping forward, taking on a little bit of dimension and reading as white. In some areas, I'm coming more onto the flower with that weathered wood color to make it appear as if the petals are folding and to add any shadow areas where the, um, where the flower is wrapping around itself. It just gives it more dimension. You can always take some of that and add it to the center as well to deepen up just the very, very center where that calla lily would be re recessing down. I'm going to continue doing this for all of the remaining flowers and I will vary the intensity. Sometimes I will do it a little heavier and sometimes I'll do it a little lighter. Not every single uh, flower is going to look exactly the same. And honestly, it works best if you just don't overthink it. Uh, if you're trying to make everything look exactly the same, uh, it's going to drive you crazy because you're applying ink with a sponge. <laughs> so just go at it with the goal of just adding color. And have fun trying different color combinations as well. Um, I, I initially, when I think of a calla lily, I think of the white variety. Um, when Kelly asked me to do a stamp set of calla lilies, I at first was like, oh, but they're so boring. <laughs> and then it didn't occur to me that they're actually quite beautiful. I mean, I knew that their structure and shape, they are a beautiful, elegant, simple flower. There's just something so gorgeous about their simplicity. I will, hands down, knew that already. <laughs> But I hadn't really paid much attention to them. So, of course, when it came time to illustrate them and I started really looking at references, I was amazed at how many colors and varieties of calla lilies there really are. And so I stand corrected. They are gorgeous. Some of the varieties that these, oh man, some of the colors are just amazing. And I will, a little bit later here, I'm going to show you, I decided to do like an orange variety and... Man, when I was looking up reference photos, yeah, these these are a simple little flower, but man, sometimes, you know, sometimes you you just don't even have to try. As the calla lily proves to us, it's gorgeous and it doesn't even have to try. Yeah, we all hate that girl. <laughs> so to add the centers, I'm using polychromos pencils. I didn't really pay much attention, didn't save the white of the little stamen area there, but the polychromos did a pretty good job of adding of covering up the green that was there and staying vibrant. For the palm frond, um, it's a bigger area, so I'm going to use a bigger dauber here, and I'm just going to sponge over that with a little bit of Twisted Citron and Mode Long ink. Once I'm done adding all of the ink to these, I am going to take a dry cloth and just wipe over the top to remove any excess ink that may be uh, floating on top of the embossing powder. So it just comes right off and it'll make all of that embossing powder bright white again. So I mentioned the orange variety that I had also done and we're going to take a look at how to do that because I did do all my die cutting at once. I went ahead and colored all of my images first and then did all the die cutting. So for this orange variety, I'm going to start by inking the entire the entire image in uh, squeezed lemonade. So this is going to be my highlight color. I'm going to leave very little of this exposed in the end, but it's going to serve as my highlight. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down first and again, covering the whole image. Then I'm gonna switch over to pumpkin. Pumpkin something. What is this color called? Carved pumpkin. I'm switching over to carved pumpkin, but any orange would do. And now I'm adding that in the, where the shadow areas would be. Now this isn't going to end up being my darkest color, but if I'm, if you think of it the same way that you would use Copics, I'm mapping out my shadow area right now. So I'm adding that carved pumpkin 
And I will eventually come out further with this. But like I said earlier, it's much easier to add color than it is to take it away. I'm going to continue adding more and more orange until I'm happy with how it looks. Now I'm coming in with that yellow. This is the dauber that I used the yellow and I'm blending all of it together. So that's actually giving me some good transitions. Now I've switched to a finer tip Fantastics and I've picked up some fired brick and I'm adding that into the very center. This is going to be my deepest, most concave part of the flower. And now I'm switching back to the orange dauber and smoothing that out. And then I'll switch back to the yellow and blend them out even further. And this is earlier when I mentioned that I liked to do this on the watercolor paper because I could do some blending because the ink is sitting on top of the paper rather than sinking and then staining it. So it gives me a little bit of play time to blend these out. If I get a color too heavy in one area, I can quickly blend it out. I can add color on top, blend them together. It's just very, very forgiving. I'll continue working, adding more depth, more shadow, more color, blending it out if I feel like I have too much, adding more where I feel like I need more until I get it exactly how I like it. You can see here that almost all of that yellow is covered up now, but it's adding, one, it's adding a beautiful glow, and two, that yellow is my highlight. So I'll keep doing the rest of these orange ones this exact same way. And this one does take a little bit longer. It does take a little bit more practice. But it's really forgiving, like I said. You can continue to blend things out. Now it looks like I'm using the blue Fantastics. I don't have a ton of these Fantastics. So what I did was one side I put uh, the I used for the blue. And then I just used the other side of the Fantastics, the other side of that sponge, for the orange. So... I wiped it off, picked up some orange, wiped it, picked up some more, sparked it until I was sure that it wouldn't transfer that blue. And then I was able to use the same stick for uh, two or more colors. Here, I'm just adding a little bit more of that fired brick. And again, I'll continue to build and deepen this. until I'm satisfied with the results. Once I've got all my images colored, we're gonna go ahead and do the die cutting. I'm using my mag magnetic platform and I'm taping all of my dies in place using a little micro pour tape. If you have the magnetic platform, you know that when you put several dies on it, sometimes the, um, the polarity will cause the dies to jump, like you can see it's doing right there. So I just tape them in place and then I can run these through all at the same time. And now that we've got all of our pieces and parts, we can start putting together our cards. I know that I'm going to have center bouquets be my focal point for my cards. So the first thing I do is I start putting together those bouquets. So I'm going to play around with the placement and I'm going to build each bouquet before I even worry about the rest of the card at this point. Now because we have so many different angles of this calla lily in the set, I can really, really build out some interesting bouquets that look like they have a ton of depth. And then at this point, I like the way the flowers look, not crazy about the uh, greenery at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and secure the bouquet part together. I'm just going to lay a piece of micro pour tape over the top, make sure that I am gripping all of the images. There you go. Then I will play around with the positioning of the greenery in the background, and I don't have to worry about each individual little flower moving on me. Once I've got it exactly where I want it and exactly, you know, where I think it's going to look good. <laughs> I will add another piece of micro pour tape to hold the entire thing together. I put that off to the side while I work on the rest of the card and I did the sentiment the exact same way. I heat embossed it in white and then inked over it with that same weathered wood. Thought it would tie in perfectly since we had already used that in the lilies. For this I used our new Sympathy Lilies stamp set and it comes with this large prayers and then it also comes with You Are In My and You Are In Our. So it's good for a personal sympathy card or something from the group. I'm going to die cut this using the companion die here and it will cut out the prayers. 
and then I can pop that up on the front of the card. I'm going to keep the rest of the card very simple. I've die cut a background using our gift card layers die and then I've die cut a circle using Simon Says Stamp stitch circles from a piece of Inka Dinka Do masking paper. I'm going to apply that to the front of my card here and then I'm going to ink through the center. I want to just create um, just something to ground that bouquet and I'm inking through it using the same weathered wood again. Now you'll notice that normally when you ink blend, it's recommended to start from the outside and come in, like start off your paper and come in. But in this case, I wanted the stronger concentration of color to be in the center and radiate out from behind the bouquet. So I can start in the center and then pull my color out because I know that that area in the center where I'm starting, where the ink might build up and be a little unblended, it's gonna be hidden behind the bouquet. And I love this part because it's always deceiving. My circle looks quite light, but once you remove that mask, you can see that there is a definite circle of color, even though with the mask on, it looked like those edges weren't dark enough. My bouquet is eventually gonna live right here, but before I adhere it, I need to do some stamping. And to do that, I'll be using my Misty again. I'm gonna lay everything down on my card um, and nothing's adhered yet. I've just got it laid out where I want it. I'm gonna get my stamp lined up where I want it to eventually be stamped. Then I'll pick that up on the door. I'm gonna ink that up using our silver lining pure color dye ink. And then I am ready to assemble this card. I adhered the palm fronds directly to the card base using a little multi matte medium. And then I adhered the bouquet and the prayers with some 3M foam tape. And now I'm just adding a little bit of finishing details using some Nouveau drops in white. You can see here, I'm not very good at placement with these. Uh, <laughs> I'm hesitating and trying to figure out where to put another one. In hindsight, watching this, I should have stopped right there. Three was probably plenty. But alas, I kept going. One day I'll learn. So here are the finished three cards that I made. So for the one that we just did on camera here, I used more of a green center and I used the you are in my prayers. And then for the other one, I did very similar, except for I used more of a yellowy center. I used uh, one less palm frond and I used the you are in our prayers. I really like the peaceful, serene color palette here, and I think it's great for a sympathy card. However, I have been drawn to color lately, and I'm loving this one. Now, I stamped the palm fronds in our fairy dust ink in the background, and then I adhered those palm fronds to white cardstock, and then die cut it using that same Simon Says Stamp Stitch Circles die. I used our basic greetings die to cut a thanks and I stacked them like three or four times for some extra dimension and finished it off again with some Nouveau drops. I'm thinking this one is my favorite out of this bunch today, guys. I don't know. How about you? I would love to know which one is your favorite. Leave it in the comments below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this technique. I hope you enjoyed the video and it inspires you to try something a little different. If you would like to learn more about these products, you can always look in the description box below where you'll find a link to our store and our design blog where we have lots more inspiration featuring all of our products. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.